Hey guys, Lizard Lee here for Monster Hunter Raytheon? Rathian? Raytheon? Is that what I said first or did I say it wrong the first you time? Said it, you right first, but I don't remember. Oh, if you're right. Well, you actually play, so I, I, I trust you a little bit more. It's the green thing we hit with a big weapon. The green thing we hit with a big weapon? Okay, okay. What, what what do you hit Devil Joe with? So there's no difference between Devil Joe and Raytheon. Except for Devil Joe is the one who will like chuck other monsters at you, right? It's a bigger thing. Devil Joe is a bigger thing. You heard it here, folks. If you know nothing about Monster Hunter, just know that Devil Joe is a bigger green thing. <laughs> Pretty much. Alrighty, so David is not here today. I'm going to be continuing with the, the weird questions I have built up. 112. What was the best thing that happened to you today? Well, that's going to have to be playing Baldur's Gate 3. I've been dying to play some D&D. Our friends can't get together to play it. And so David was like, okay, honey, go into Steam. Type in Baldur's. And by the way, both of us were like B-A-U-L-D-E-R and nothing was coming up. And eventually he pulled it up on his Steam and he was like, oh, no, it's B-A-L-D-U-R. And I was like, oh, that's like Baldur's. I don't know. <laughs> it, was, it was weird. But it came up. I bought it. I spent like... 20 minutes or more creating my character <laughs> like character creation is always one of my favorite parts of anything like I always just want to spend a ton of time making a character and I will say you guys 95% of the time if elf is available I pick elf I really like being elves I love elves I love the long pointy ears they're just it's fun but I came across a tiefling which also has, like, kind of pointy ears, but also has horns and a tail and blue skin. And I was like, I like that. So I started going with that one. And then I found an option where you can select, like, you can have all of the colors be available to you. And, and so I was like, wait a minute. I liked the red tiefling's abilities more, but I can make her skin blue. So I did that. <laughs> And I spent a long time trying to decide what color hair to do because the blue skin was just, it, w it was bad. And I ended up going with red hair and it looks kind of crazy. And you know what? I love it. So <laughs> I made a tiefling and I looked through the different classes and pretty quickly I was like, I want to be a druid. I want to have all the spells. Like the first... The first game we're going to play when we come back to playing the games with our friends, I don't want to be a druid because that that's that's a lot of power for someone who's only played one D&D &D game. <laughs> I don't want to be the person who's like, ah, it's spells, I don't know what to do, versus in a video game like this. Like, currently, I'm only playing one player, and so it's like if I take ten minutes to figure out what to do, it's fine. And if I can get it to be two-player with David, you know, maybe he can be like, you know, Liz, you should heal yourself. That would be a good spell to use right now. Then we're good. <laughs> Versus when you're playing, you know, a game with, like, four people and the, the dungeon master, it's kind of like, no, we're not going to help you. Come on, go, go, go. So, anyways, I started playing that, and it was, it's, it's really fun. I haven't gotten very far, <laughs> but... It's really fun. I'm really enjoying it. I'm, I'm excited. The full game isn't released yet, so like it, it's in beta basically. And from what I've read, you can only go to like level 4 or maybe, maybe 5. So that's kind of disappointing. But I've been jonesing for some D&D, &D, and you know what? Right now that is scratching the itch, and that's okay. <laughs> uh, it was 60 bucks in Steam. If anybody else, you know, decides they want to play. 
I'm enjoying it so far. I mean, I would recommend you look up videos on YouTube and whatnot to see if it's up your alley before you go spend $60 on it. I watched David play it, gosh, sometime last year, I think. And I was like, that looks really cool. But I, I don't know, I didn't feel like it. Versus now, I'm like, yes, I want to play. <laughs> so as soon, I'm, as soon as I'm done with this, I'm going to go play some more. <laughs> Okay, moving on. 113. As a child, what did you think would be awesome about being an adult, but isn't as awesome as you thought it would be? Well, I mean, this is like a, a partial, and, and it's just like picking my own food. You know, like I, I had to eat things growing up that I didn't like, and it wasn't because like, I love vegetables, all right? So, and my whole family, we all love vegetables. So it wasn't, you know, like, this is the healthy thing that you need to eat. That was never a problem for me. It was the way my family made steaks. They make them well done. And I have learned I am a medium rare, closer to rare girl. So well done is just too chewy and tasteless and I hate it. Versus medium rare is juicy and delicious and very easy to cut and chew. And I don't have very strong teeth. So, you know, having things that are easier to chew, great. But also if it tastes better, wonderful. Actually, I said tastes better, tastes good. Well done steak does not taste good to me. And so a lot of times they would just make me chicken because I wouldn't eat the steak unless I was freaking forced to because it was disgusting. So, you know, I was like, oh, when I grow up, I'm gonna be able to pick out the food that I want and it's gonna be great. So now as an adult, it's like, okay, yeah. I can order whatever food I want, and since I live in Vegas, I can order it at any time, basically. Or, <laughs> on the other side, I have to cook it for myself. I'm not a great cook. Like, if I have, I, I made some rice aroni the other day, I, I, I just follow the directions on the box. I can do that. If you give me something that is prepackaged, I can follow the directions. That's not a problem. But, like, steak, I don't. I don't know how to cook that, and and it looks really, really gross, <laughs> even but even after it's cooked. Like, steak just looks disgusting to me. I, I don't like how it looks. Tastes delicious, but it doesn't look good. And I much prefer when David cooks it for me. <laughs> but, yeah, okay, so I thought it'd be awesome being able to pick out my own food, but now it has, you know, it's not as awesome, because... I also have to cook that food. I have to pay for that food. You know, not fun stuff. Um, I thought, like, being out of school would be awesome. And, okay, and I'm saying this as a super nerd who loved school. I was excited to go and work, you know, and, and have a job and make a living. And it's, <laughs> it's not the worst thing, but I feel like I had more free time as a kid. Which, I mean, I guess I did, because you didn't, you weren't at school for eight hours. Right? Is that right? <laughs> it was, you'd go to school from, actually, no, I guess it was, huh? Seven to three-ish? Seven to three-thirty? So I guess it would be about eight hours. But you got to be there with your friends. You had breaks in between your classes, and you got to eat lunch with your friends versus with work. You know, I mean, especially now that I'm working from home. But even, honestly, even when I was in the office, I'm not good at taking my breaks. I'm, I'll, I'll take my lunch. That's never a problem because I get hungry. And when I get hungry, I, I start to not feel well. So I won't work as well. And then I'll be disappointed in myself and I'll disappoint other people. And I'm just, I don't want that. But, like, you know, taking the 10-minute break on the first half of my workday before lunch and then taking my other 10-minute break on the second half of my workday after my lunch... It's, um, I'm not good at those. So, I don't, I don't take those. And when I take my lunch, I don't take it the same time as, every, you know, every, n none of us all take our lunch at the same time, even when we were in the office. Unless we specifically planned, you know, something for lunch. And, oh, okay, so what's happening on the screen is I, I realized a mistake I made. I talk about it at the end of the video. <laughs> I'm a dum-dum. It's okay, though. Um, 
it wasn't with my cross stitching. It was with my outlining of the box and it's fine. So, um, yeah, it's just, it's not the same as being in school because your friends aren't with you. Also work is really difficult, or at least it can be, you know, like you really have to think just like in school, but I feel like I can't look in a book and figure out exactly what I need to do and understand in order to succeed at work. Versus at school, it was like, you know, if I want to do well on this test, I need to read the book. I need to go over the work that we've done and I will do well. That is not a guarantee when you're working. Like, yeah, I'm in the accounting field. I could read my accounting books from school all day. That may not help me. You know, so I, I thought it'd be awesome, but it's not. Honestly, I want to become a billionaire and then I can just cross stitch all day, every day listen to audiobooks and Critical Role, and it'll be great. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I have like 15 to 20 episodes of Critical Role's Campaign 1 left to watch. And I just found out like three, four days ago, Campaign 2 ended at like 120 something episodes or whatever. So it's like, crap. <laughs> I'm finally about to finish the first one. And they just finished the second one. Ah! But honestly, I am also kind of excited about it. Because I'm the kind of person I like being able to binge things. I don't like when I catch up and I have to wait. Like, I... I loved reading Kill Six Billion Demons. It's a, it's a comic on the internet. It, it's free. You can Google it and look it up. Really cool. I was loving it. And then I caught up to where the artist was. And you guys, you don't even have to look it up unless you want to. His artwork, at least I think it's a guy. I could be wrong. The artist's work is beautiful. It is insanely detailed. It is colored. It is drop dead gorgeous and it's just jaw dropping so as you can imagine they only get one page out every once in a while it's not like a manga where you get you know a full chapter it's one page and I caught up and it just it drove me crazy so I stopped reading for a while and one day I will come back and I'll reread all of it from the beginning again because I've forgotten a lot of stuff and then I'll catch up again, and I'll be really upset about it again. <laughs> David's not like that. He he has, like, five comics that he reads every morning. You know, he goes in, he reads the updates, and it's only one or two pages, and he's fine. I can't do that. I have no idea how I got on that subject. I am so sorry. I'm going to move on, because I'm crazy. <laughs> 114. When's censorship warranted? Uh, well, when you have something that is for the public, if it's, you know, like, really violent or really just inappropriate, uh, like, like, uh, trailers for movies, you know, if I'm watching the new Saw movie Spiral at theaters, you don't need to censor the trailers of other horror movies. I'm fine. But if I'm at, I don't know. It doesn't have to be a G-rated movie, but if I'm at a movie where I can take my child, I I think those trailers should be censored. Like, you know, if, if you're going to, I don't know, if, if the new live-action Mulan movie were released in theaters, maybe it was, I don't know. I haven't seen it, I don't really, I'm not interested. I love the animated movie, and you just, you can't top that. Just like Aladdin, like, you just, ugh. Moving on. Um... It's a movie that is not necessarily geared at children. Like, because I've seen some of the action scenes in the trailers, and it's like, oh, okay, it's a little violent. But it's still a movie you can take your kids to. If I were, if I, you know, took my, my nephew to the movie to see Mulan, and the Mortal Kombat trailer played, they, I don't think they should show a fatality in that trailer. I think censorship, cens censorship in that instance is appropriate because you don't want to give a kid nightmares from a freaking trailer when they're here to see Mulan, you know? Um, gosh. 
it's really, it's kind of hard to comment on because it's like, at some point, you know, censorship is inappropriate and you're going to lose something, you know, like censorship in the media. We re- in Vegas, there was a shooting at a pool in Las Vegas and I, I, I guess like over a hundred shots went off and from what I've seen so far, people were hurt, but no one was killed. So there's that. But, you know, if they were, if they were like, oh, you know, a kid might see this newscast, we have to censor it, we can't talk about shooting people, you're not really commenting on the news. So, you know, things like in the media, I think it's just on the parents to make sure their child only has access to what is appropriate to them. I don't think the media needs to be the one censoring themselves for that. Um, I don't think it's appropriate to release videos of, you know, someone actually dying. I'm actually really happy that the video of, um, oh my god, what's his name? He, he was killed by a stingray. Oh god! No! What is his name? I have to look this up. I'm so sorry, you guys. St- Steve Irwin? Irwin? Irwin. Steve Irwin, right? Oh god, I have to Google it to make sure I'm saying it right. Steve Irwin. Yes, it is Steve Irwin. Okay. You know, I remember hearing in the news that a stingray caught him on the chest, you know, like right over his heart. And that, you know, it it killed him right afterwards. Like, you know, he did not live very long. And that they were filming at the time. I'm really glad that video was never released because that is a real human being. But also, (laughs) Steve Irwin, knowing him, he wouldn't want people to see that because he wouldn't want them to blame the stingray or manta ray. I'm not sure. I don't, I still don't know the differences between those two, but he wouldn't want anyone to blame that fish for his death. That's what he stood for. He cared about animals. That's like all he cared about. (laughs) He was a great guy. And I think that is appropriate censorship. They, that should never be released. Even after his family has passed away and they're like, no, maybe we can profit off of this. I don't think that's appropriate. I think that is an okay time to censor something. And, and I don't even mean like, you know, just censoring it out and making the image fuzzy. It should never be released at all. Does that count as censorship? Oh, God. I'm getting too much into this, aren't I? I'm sorry. I I think there are times when it is warranted, but especially here in America, we're all about freedom of speech. I mean, I hate that people are racist and they're allowed to have those comments, but, you know, if you censor that opinion, who's to say that, you know, your your positive opinion on something isn't viewed in the same way to someone else? You know, like, like your views on someone who's saying racist things. I don't know if this is making any sense. You're always going to say something that's going to offend someone else. And so if you start censoring these things, it might just spread out and you might just censor everything. And then that's, what's the point of living, you know? I'm going to move on now. I'm so sorry. 115, what's the most boring superhero you can come up with? Um, a superhero that just tries to talk to his enemies using quotes from Shakespeare plays. That's it. Nothing else. I don't really like Shakespeare, so (laughs) that would be boring to me. (laughs) But, you know, someone who just talks like yeah if it's if it's an interesting way to get yourself out of a bad situation that's interesting but if it's just you quoting things to someone in the hopes that they give up that's not gonna work that's that's weird so that's boring 116 what would be some of the downsides of certain superpowers okay so i think it's important to establish rules. So, like, with invisibility, is it permanent? Can you turn it on and off? Does it just turn on and off randomly? Does it, is it connected to your emotions? 
Because if you can always choose when to become invisible, I don't think there's any downsides to that. Other than you, you might start to abuse it. You might start using it to, you know, like, sneak into a room after someone to hear what they're talking about. And that's, that's not cool. That's a downside. You know, it'll, it'll probably make you a, a not-so-good person. <laughs> um, what, what's, um, uh, the power of flight. I mean, I guess it'd probably make you lazy otherwise. You wouldn't walk and run as much. And unless you have, like, a great metabolism and whatnot, your muscles are going to atrophy, and that's not good. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It, it, I think it just depends on how you can use the powers. So, I don't know. 117, what word is a lot of fun to say? Whippersnapper. I love saying whippersnapper. You whippersnappers get off my lawn! <laughs> I, I am excited for the day that I'm old and I can call someone a whippersnapper and, like, it's okay because I'm old. <laughs> I just, I love, fun. I love saying that word. It is one of my favorite words because it's just so much fun to say. 118, what current trend do you hope will go on for a long time? I'm not trendy. I have no idea. Um, hmm. I mean, I, I know I have a couple friends on Facebook who their uh, TikTok is linked to it, and so I'll get to see some of the videos they post, and I can't speak for anyone else. This is just my perspective. Like, the two friends that I watch, I really like it because I went to high school with them, and they live in different countries from me, so I never get to see them, and I don't get to talk to them a lot, but getting to see their little, you know their little clips, their little videos. It reminds me of all the fun times we had, and it makes me happy to know that they're doing well, you know, like they're having fun. So for me, I hope it continues. I know a lot of bad things have come from TikTok, but I've also seen some good things, you know, like people doing good, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Good, <laughs> good activities sounds stupid you know, just doing good things for the community and other nice things. And I, I hope, I hope good stuff comes out of it. And if it does, I hope that continues. We're going to move on. 119. What actors or actresses can't play a different character because they played their most favorite character, excuse me, their most famous character too well? Johnny Depp. I, I, everything I've seen him in since Pirates of the Caribbean, he's just been Jack Sparrow. Um, who else? Because they play their most famous character too well. Um, honestly, that's the only one I can think of right now. And I will say, you guys, I really like Johnny Depp. And I really hate his wife. She's a horrible human being, and we all need to be on his side because it has been proven time and time again, time and time and time again, that she's the one abusing him, and it's it really bothers me that because he's a man, people are siding with his wife just because she's a woman. It's ridiculous. It, it, ugh. Sorry, moving on. 120. Where's your go-to restaurant for amazing food? I really love, um, um, oh my god, my mind just blanked. What is it called? <laughs> I have to pull up Google Maps. I'm pretty sure I have it in my favorites. It's not an English word. <laughs> is it that? Nope, it's not that. It's not that. This? Roma Deli. Roma Deli. Oh my goodness. That is my favorite restaurant of all time. Delicious foods. It's Italian and it's just it's so yummy. Um, I also really like 
dim sum. There's a really good dim sum place over here. Always delicious. People are always nice at both locations. Um, and honestly, I might get flack for this, but in and out their burgers are delicious. And again, every time I've gone, all the employees have always been super nice. I mean, generally most people are nice to me because I'm nice to them and I say please and thank you, but you know, there's, there, there have been occasions where people have been rude and I'm just like, dude, what did I do to you? Like, I understand you're probably having a bad day. You don't need to take it out on me. Okay. 121. What's something that all your friends agree on? Um, uh, what is something all of my friends agree on? Hanging out at our place is the best place. <laughs> like, I, I, I don't think we're the most central of our friends. You know, like, I don't think we're the, the most centered point between everybody. But everybody always comes to ours. I mean, I will say it helps. We don't have any pets. Uh, we have a lot of space. We have a really nice couch. So... I have no idea what else. We all like each other? <laughs> 122. What's your best story from a wedding? Um, my best story from a wedding. I haven't really been involved in a wedding. I feel like my best story from a wedding would be one that I have to, like, be a part of. You know, like, be a part of the wedding party rather than just a viewer, if that makes sense. You know, like, I haven't been a bridesmaid. I haven't been a maid of honor. I haven't done any of that. Um, best story from a wedding. I don't know. Nothing is really standing out. I know David and I danced at a friend's wedding, and it was our first slow dance, so that was nice. But it's not really a story, so... I don't know. 123, what languages do you speak? I only speak English fluently. I know a teeny tiny bit of Spanish and a teeny tiny bit of Japanese. And I confuse the two, so it's not great. 124, what's the most pleasant sounding accent? I really like the British accent and the Australian accent. But honestly, I like most accents. I, I, I like listening to people talk. It's nice. 125, what's something that everyone, absolutely everyone in the entire world can agree on? Nothing. Nothing. I'd say, like, world peace, but that's not true. I'd say ice cream, but not true. Cookies, not true. <laughs> um, maybe cats or dogs? No, that's not true. I've met people who don't like either. I... Can't agree on the fact that the earth is round. So, um, yeah, I, I, I got nothing. 126, what country is the strangest? I mean, I feel like I have to go with the U.S. Because, like, you know, we talk about being a melting pot and how we want everybody here and, and then we don't treat them right and all these things, and, like, we're a free country, and it's great, but it, very strange. This is a very strange country to be in. 127, what's the funniest word in the English language? I mean, just a word on its own? Uh, I know whippersnapper is funny to say, but... Uh, lollygagging? <laughs> I think that's a funny word. I like it. I don't know. 128. Oh! What happened? It opened a new tab, but we're good. <laughs> 128. What's some insider knowledge that only people in your line of work have? How much people are spending on all of their stuff? I'm in data entry, so... I know how much people are spending on their food, or on their flights, or on their taxis, and all this, so, just me. 
121, well, excuse me, 129, who do you wish you could get back into contact with? I mean, any of my friends from high school. I, I would totally be down for that. Um, especially because, you know, we were in Japan, and so we all spread out around the world. It's very hard to hang out with them, especially now with COVID. You know, I, I missed my 10-year reunion because the world was shut down. <laughs> and I was, I've been looking forward to that for 10 years. <laughs> and I, I loved high school. I loved all my friends. So I was really genuinely looking forward to the 10-year reunion disappointed we don't get to have it but I prefer not having it and none of us getting sick over us having it and people getting sick you know 130 how do you make yourself sleep when you can't seem to get to sleep I don't I'm not good at relaxing so I literally just lay there and I will lay there all night until I eventually just fall asleep because I'm too exhausted to not that's it <laughs> 131, if people receive a purple heart for bravery, what would other color hearts represent? I don't know. I mean, because this is specifically for, like, people at war and the military and whatnot. I don't really want to make new things for that, so there, there are already medals for a bunch of other things that get awarded. I'm moving on. 132, what are some of the best vacations you've had? Well, unfortunately, not the Caymans, because David and I were both really, really sick. But, I've traveled around the world. Like, Spain was amazing when we went over there to vacation. England, Germany. I've Australia was awesome. China was great. I, I can't narrow it down, you guys. Like... I've been way too many places. I can't pick one specific vacation that was the best. They were all amazing. I am really freaking lucky. I know David's always making fun of me because I'm always, like, rubbing it in people's faces that I travel. But, like, I am so grateful. I I don't know how else to show it. <laughs> we're coming up to the end of the video. So, hope you guys enjoyed this one. It's a girl dragon. <laughs> That's all I know. <laughs> and that is the end of Monster Hunter Rathian. Rathian, I don't remember what we decided on. I got four hours and 44 minutes of footage. And David told me this one, the one I just did, Rathian, is a girl. And the, the one I did before is a boy. And apparently, you know, they're, they're, they're a thing. And I was just like, you know, I actually really appreciate that whoever came up with Monster Hunter was like, yes, the one who has to be nice, pretty colors is the boy. And the one who has to be dull, not so pretty colors is the girl. Because that dull green and the dull browns are just not attractive. But the bright reds are, you know beautiful so yet another reason why i think men should have to show off how gorgeous they are rather than us putting on makeup and jewelry on it, all this other crap <sighs> no <laughs> i really don't care like I, I i've always been like you know the only time i'm really gonna seriously start wearing a bunch of makeup is when my man starts wearing a bunch of makeup because it's, it's, it's so much time so much effort and a lot of money, too. And I just... Yeah. Like, my skin's not perfect. I don't really care. So... <laughs> like, makeup just makes my skin worse. Why would I want to continue to use it? I'm just saying. Anyways. Um, oh. If you noticed at all while I was stitching this white border that I have around the green one... It is, I screwed up and I did one stitch higher than I should have. It's like if you really get in there and you look across from the top of the red where the white is, uh, the top of the red dragon where the white is, if you look across to where the top of the green one is, I went up one stitch. 
I am so grateful that I started at the bottom because I the bottom lines up correctly. So it wasn't a problem. <laughs> like the issue is, so I did Seraphian. I have a plus four here. Okay, you can't see. Plus four here and a plus three here. So there should be three stitches below where it ends and four stitches above. But there's five above because I put the white one stitch too high because I just, I, I can't count, I guess. I don't know. I'm just going to have to be extra careful in the future because I don't want to make that mistake and have it screw everything up. Okay, that's all that I have. So like, subscribe, share, comment, all that jazz. And I'll see you guys next video.